Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob. I'm in studio with Nate. Nate, thanks for joining me this morning. Absolutely, great to be back. We've been uh, kind of out of sync because he's been on the road and we've got other stuff going on, but it's great to be back. And really what we wanted to talk about is basically morning cigars. This is a common, common misconception. If you're gonna call it that, I'm gonna call it a misconception. I'm just gonna throw my hat out there. It's a misconception to believe that you have to pick a Connecticut shade or a Connecticut wrappered cigar to enjoy in the morning. I just think it's complete and total farce. Um, is it a great cigar in the morning? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of other great cigars as well. I, I am smoking the farce Connecticut shade. Uh, what are you smoking? I am smoking a relatively new La Madrina Connecticut shade wrappered cigar. Mexican San Andreas on the binder. Um, I think pretty much very similar guts to the original La Madrina, I think, if I'm looking at the details here correctly. Uh, but it's San Andreas binder, fillers from the DR, Nicaragua, and I believe Pennsylvania. Both very of these Connecticut's, if you're going to call them that, because that's what the wrapper is on the outside, both of these that we have in our hand are non-typical Connecticut's. Correct. So... The theory of a Connecticut back when our dad smoked cigars were the body of the cigar is going to be light. Mm -hmm. The nicotine profile is going to be light. So you had this like all around light cigar that anybody could smoke, mm -hmm. right? Problem with that is that really light cigars with not a lot of body get bitter really fast mm -hmm. when they get smoked hot. And that I can't stand. I don't like that either. And I like stuff with a little more nuance and flavor and complexity that changes throughout the cigar, especially first thing in the morning when my palate is really fresh. I can taste everything in the coffee that I just brewed up. Uh, I tend to want to go for in the morning uh, kind of one of two directions. I don't mind Connecticut's that are interesting like this, that are Connecticut around something a little more complex or uh, bold, maybe, if you will, or unique on the inside. Most of the cigars that I brought today to talk about all have that. If they're Connecticut, there's something different on the inside. But I want something with some complexity. So if I'm going to really have a nice cup of pour over, which is my preferred way to have coffee in the morning, I want to have a cigar that's going to have some unique complexity or piggyback or bolster some of the notes of that coffee, whether it be kind of a fruity flavor or a floral flavor or like a rich, creamy, caramely, chocolatey flavor. Um, especially on a cool fall day like this, you get a cup of coffee that's just mellow and smooth and you have something that's like, let's say an Oliva Serie V Milano. It's just like a chocolate bomb. Delicious. Absolutely. I was thinking about this this morning. So why is it that I gravitate towards cigars? It's probably because of the nuance that you can get out of them, right? Kind of like wine, right? You can get all sorts of different flavors. You can have all sorts of different types of experiences. And then I thought about my style of coffee. I literally went out of my way today to drive to a place that I had to walk into and get a pour over that was single origin coffee. Yes. And we've already done a coffee and cigar pairing yep. thing. Um, so go back and watch that video if you're interested more in like pairing cigars with coffee. But I, I thought about it today and I was like, I choose my coffee the same way I choose my cigars. There's a time and a place to just go grab a cup of coffee and there's a time and a place to get a budget stick and go out and mow the lawn. But I, if I'm going to take the time to consume something, I'm probably going to spend val value like money or time or energy into getting something that I really, really enjoy. Absolutely. Like I could have enjoyed a standard Starbucks cup of coffee, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's over roasted. It's too dark. It's too bitter, then it throws off my cigar pairing. It does, yeah. This is a super light, single origin Mexican coffee that was is phenomenal. I'm still enjoying it, and it's going well with the Connecticut. And that's why I, I chose a Connecticut because a really light bodied cigar. I try to match strength with strength. Yep. In this case, but yep. anyways, I'm getting too much into coffee. All that to say. <laughs> When you're picking out your cigar in the morning, it might be because you want to match strength with strength with what you're drinking. If you put like uh, cream in your coffee or Bailey's or whatever, 
you might want that really creamy cigar. Like this right now with a little sip of this Nespresso. And I think this one is, Nespresso for me still tends to be a little bit on the roasty side. Like it's a little darker, kind of more bold, even in some of their single origins. But this particular coffee, I think is one of their single origin, like Venezuela or something like that. And it's really bringing out like a chocolate caramel kind of notes in the cigar. Tastes delicious. So why do you think it is that, um, and and anyone out there in the comment world, put out some cigars that you smoke in the morning. We want to hear the brands that you're smoking in the morning. I have a whole table full of them. <laughs> I mean, I have the Monte Cristo White, the Monte Cristo Classic uh, series. I got uh, Rocky Patel, or sorry, a Romeo and Julieta Reserva. I got the Aventura Queen's Pearl. One of your um, favorites, right? Yeah, Dapper. You're smoking a Dapper. Yep. I smoke the Dapper Cubo Clara. That's, again, these are all Connecticut shade cigars. This is like typically if you go to any list online, they're going to have something like this mm -hmm. in the list. And why is that? Why can we not smoke cigars that have more medium body, that mm -hmm. are different wrappers mm -hmm. than Connecticut Shade, that that do come with flavor? Why aren't they on the list? Yeah. Well, and who's to say that, I don't know, grabbing something that's very heavy on the hero, like an LFD – you know, double a hero, you're feeling kind of dragging when you get up in the morning. That's going to jumpstart you real quick. Well, see, and I know somebody who smokes higher nicotine based cigars in the morning mm -hmm. because nicotine is slightly a stimulant. Mm -hmm. So he'll smoke those in the morning, get them going, and then he'll taper off throughout the day. So, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I'm because if you're smoking a big, bold cigar after a nice dinner, kind of which is the classic pairing right. or classic time frame to have that big bold i've just had a big steak dinner if you will and often a cigar shop will tell you make sure you have a huge meal before you smoke the cigar like you know big glass of red wine steak potatoes all of that you're going to get a big buzz from that cigar it's kind of the same as if you're having a big cup of coffee right before you go to bed some people can handle right. that others are going to be ready to go ready to go at yeah. 11 o'clock at night and I always, after a big dinner like that, I always want my cigar and a decaf espresso because I don't want to be up. But I still want the flavor of espresso mm -hmm. with my cigar. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing is like most coffee nowadays is over roasted or dark roast. Mm -hmm. You can get lighter roast, but um, and then too, like if you just go to a coffee shop and get espresso, you're not like uh, the one thing that I like about an espresso brand itself is you can get different origins mm -hmm. to have different flavor profiles and like medium strength, low strength, body, all that. That to me is like cigars. Mm -hmm. I can go into the cabinet, look at all the Nespresso pods and then go, okay, with the blind man puff, it's a medium bodied cigar. I'm going to go with a medium bodied espresso. And then too, you can even match like nuanced flavors of like if it's more berry or more creamy or more woody or more earthy. I don't know. I think there's just so much more to just pigeonholing ourselves into Connecticut shade cigars as being the quintessential morning stick. And I'm it's, here to say no more of that. Absolutely. And I love <laughs> as I smoke one. By I, the way. <laughs> I still like them. I just I do don't want to be pigeonholed into like one thing. I, I, I will say I just watched a couple days ago. Uh, Tim Swanson from Cigars Daily did a great probably seven or eight minute video on the 70-70 rule. 70 degrees and 70% humidity. And by the end of that video, I kind of knew where he was going. He found that the cigars he enjoyed the most out of his humidor, when he tested them with the, I think it's, do I pronounce it right? The humidimeter, the, yeah. the hygrometer that goes in the end of your cigar. Yeah. Cigar medics is what I call it. Yes. I don't know. What, that's like the parent. Name. It's cool little device. You can insert it into the end of your cigar. And I think when you cut the cap, it's best on this end. Yes. Uh, that he really enjoyed cigars that were between 63 and 65%. And I've been saying for the last couple of years that that's where I really like my cigars. Uh, but what's interesting about that is that so there's not a hard and fast rule. But yeah, and I will just say caveat. 
I keep my cigars at 69 roughly, uh -huh. and I'm still putting that cigar medic meter in my cigars and it's reading 63, 64. Yep. It's because the, the tobacco is only going to absorb so much uh, moisture uh -huh. and that is more reading water activity. Sure. And it's trying to convert it to relative humidity, but it's not like a complete and total, like it's accurate, yep. but it's not, you can't fully say that relative humidity is the exact same as water activity. You yep. can kind of make an inference there. Yep. So when it does read 62 to 64, that's where I like to smoke them too. But I keep my cigars at 70% mm -hmm. or 69% yep. Boveda. So the Boveda is what's keeping the, the environment at the right relative humidity so that it smokes at the right water activity and my wooden humidor at home 69 percent yeah my acrylics here at the office 69 percent the one instance where i'll do 65 percent is i have a a pelican branded travel case and it's absolutely airtight and in the warmer summer months i'll pop a 65 in there sure and then in the winter i put a 69 in there and i just kind of alternate so morning cigars I want to know from the people out there, thank you for commenting. We got New World, AJ Fernandez cigars. We got Perdomo 10th Anniversary from Roberto. A great cigar. CAO MX2s. That's a great cigar. High Claire Castle. Uh, Banker John. High Claire Castle I just smoked recently. Fantastic. Phenomenal cigar. Fantastic. Uh, Avo Classic. I think you want, can you click on some of these? Sorry. I'm trying to get them popped up. Show them, show them. Yeah, just start going through them. They're great. These are great cigars. If you are interested in what is good out there, these are great. Uh, uh, Lot 23, <laughs> I've had that uh, a couple times. That's a great cigar. And the other thing, too, that you might be thinking, so I approach it two ways. One, what am I drinking this morning? Yep. What's my mood even? Mm -hmm. Like, am I ready for a lot of flavor or am I just like, I just want something creamy and smooth and consistent. Mm -hmm. And I, I went that way. Like this weekend, this last weekend, I was putting up a, a privacy fence in, in my backyard. So I was doing all this manual labor and I thought I can't have a cigar that has a lot of nuance to it because yep. I'm not going to appreciate it. Yep. But I want a cigar that's great tasting because the last thing I want to do is not enjoy the cigar while I'm doing my work. So I'm putting up this fence and I grab a cup of coffee and I'm like, this coffee's great. It's just typical medium roast coffee. And I grabbed a um, this small size of the Superfly Connecticut. See if you can, that's such a cool band. Love this band. It's super cool. This is one of my favorite morning cigars. Again, another great, like the regular Superfly very very st strong this has got almost the same in innards as that and then put a connecticut on it it's just it was phenomenal i kept stopping my work and i think i even texted you you and I was did like, in the middle of it you did i was like dude <laughs> my morning is going so well right now yes. I have a cup of coffee the sun is shining i'm putting up a fence and i'm smoking this cigar and enjoying my day i get kind of like goosebumps thinking uh -huh. about it. like the experience is what I'm after. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily just saying, I got to grab a cup of coffee in a Connecticut shade. Mm -hmm. I'm going for an experience. And then I followed up with the, what was, what's the name of the crown heads orange label? Oh, the um, Luminosa. Luminosa by crown heads. I, I had a Churchill just like this farce. And that was another great cigar to follow it up with. And the whole morning just kept getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And I just, I didn't even have enough coffee to keep going on this. Cause at this point I'm like, I just got to keep going on this project, but I'm smoking the cigar and enjoying mm -hmm. it. So I don't know how you approach your mornings. That's what I'm trying to get after. Like, how are you trying to decide if you're even going to smoke a cigar in the morning? I look at it as like, what am I doing and what kind of mood am I trying to get myself into? Yeah. Cause had I picked a cigar, I didn't know. And I kind of took a risk with the crown heads. Uh, what was it called? Luminoso? Uh, Luminosa. Or Luminosa? I believe it's Luminosa. I'd never smoked it before. So I kind of took a risk at like saying, hey, never smoked this before. I've heard good reviews on it. And it worked out. But I, that wasn't my first choice because I didn't want to take that risk. I, I smoked the Superfly 
Connecticut. And so I don't know how you guys are approaching your day to say, how do I want to start my day? Yeah. How, how do you go about it? Often starting my day is about an hour walk with my dogs. And if my wife is going with me, I have the ability to take a cigar with me. I tend to pick cigars that again, aren't super nuanced because I know I'm not going to be paying as much attention to the smoke. Right. But I want something that's flavorful, something that tastes great. I generally will go Toro size because I walk in the winter and you have a pair of gloves on and you get anything smaller than a Toro and you grab it with your gloves and you got basically a little petite Robusto left to smoke. Right. So I'll smoke bigger cigars. Um, some days if it's really brisk out or I got a great night's sleep, there's a cigar that's a pretty strong cigar for most smokers made by Crux called the Bull and Bear. I believe, I hope I get this right, that it's 60% Lajero in the mix. And wow. it's just, it's full flavored, it's bold, but it's really great on a cold winter day. Um, I'll often smoke. And that's your morning stick. And I'll do that as a morning stick See, when I'm walking the dog. That's totally against uh -huh. like what people would say. It's like, oh, right? super strength and you got to save that for end of day. Other days, I just don't believe that. this is one. Let's see if we can get this one on this camera, Matt. This is the Hoya de Nicaragua, Connecticut Antonio. We'll let we'll get that in right. There we go. Uh, again, a, a fairly full flavored cigar with a Connecticut wrapper that's got a lot of strength to it, but it smokes really, really well. Um, I find sometimes in the winter that Connecticut's will split on me if it's cold. So I'll smoke something oh, with a yeah. stouter wrapper that can kind of affect what I pick first thing in the morning. Great point. Click on yeah. that super fly. So <laughs> the guy's handle is super fly and he says, <laughs> oh yeah, super fly. Like, that's awesome. But this is a great point. Okay. So mind your climate, right? Like uh -huh. wintertime, Connecticut wrappers, anything, um, uh, Cameroon wrappers, mm -hmm. anything really like thin wrappers. Yes. You might want to go with Habano or Broadleaf or uh, something that's thicker, like a Mexican San Andreas, mm -hmm. something that has more oil in it so that you can go through that kind of temperature change. One of my favorite producers, HVC, uh, Rainier Lorenzo. This is a, a reblend and a rebrand of the Pan Caliente. Now they call it the hot cake. Uh, this is a great morning cigar. One, it's kind of fun because it's hot cakes and people love hot cakes in the morning. Because I, I have a house of, I have five daughters. So I'm the only guy in a house of six women. Pancakes are like the oh, yeah. staple breakfast food, waffles. We yeah. go through cases of Eggos. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 my children are literally packed with chemicals and preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we oh, pretty clean the rest of the day. But love pancakes. This is a great cigar in the morning. Um, coffee, leather. It's rich. Pairs with a nice richer cup of coffee. Um, I don't have to worry on a cooler day, especially in Minnesota. I like smoking when it's cool and cold out. Bring my computer out. Work in my Adirondack chair, and I just know this is going to really hold up well in that temperature. Love it. So that's, I mean, comment below how you're picking your cigars for the day or what, what, what you're doing really like ask questions. We're here to answer them. That's the whole point. The other thing that I decide on right away is what's my time length. Cause that's going to dictate like this Lampert, uh, 1675 cigar, really tiny, very short. Also the Perdon, uh, uh, Padron 1964, <laughs> both of these have like anniversary, you know, 1964, 1675, the dates confuse me. Anyways, <laughs> both these cigars, really great. I would say the Padron, mm -hmm. if you don't know what Padron is, obviously go check yourself, go get a Padron. Mm -hmm. You'll be astonished, especially the anniversary series Maduro. That's what this is. But I can't always do this cigar in the morning. Because sure. it has some power to it yeah. that I have to like look at myself and be like, are you ready for that? Yeah. And then I take a serious look and I go, no. Yes. Or, <laughs> or I say yes. <laughs> you literally, like you just said, you check yourself. Yeah, I check. You go, I no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but it's great. It's and and the size, you guys, that's what I'm getting at. It's like the size right now, these sizes I can get behind and and do in the morning sometimes because I don't have a ton of time because you know, it's off to the races with the day. This is a, day. my 30 minute commute from home to the office here at Boveda. Perfect cigar. As long right. as I don't have the window down too much, it doesn't torch the cigar. It's a beautiful way to spend the morning. Yeah. 
And I like the fact that you can have more than one of these a day. So like mm -hmm. if you are truly like kind of in a hurry, rushing around, doing stuff, you can enjoy the cigar and, and then it's gone and then you can light another one later. Mm -hmm. So size, the length is going to dictate to what you can do with it. You know, for me, I, this says I haven't even gotten to my like top five yet. <laughs> this is pretty bad. I'm going to add one in that short list, uh, you know, of shorter cigars. One that has become a huge fan favorite of mine and a lot of the Boveda team because it's a pretty medium mellow cigar. Uh, Crown Heads makes a cigar called the Juarez and they do a limited release called the Shots. And it's a four by 50 little yes. short cigar, comes in a 50 count box. I keep them in the humidor here at Boveda and it's become kind of the communal humidor. They're like, Nate, can I grab another one of those Juarez shots? I'm like, yes. It's chocolatey, kind of like having a, this will date me a little bit. I freaking love Yuhu. Have you ever had Yuhu? Uh, yeah. It's basically chocolate milk, only it's water. Like it's chocolate water and it's delicious. But that kind of tastes like Yuhu tastes. Like it's got that creamy, chocolatey, Ooh. like coconut to it. And it's not a strong cigar, but it's got really good flavor. And it just, some days my palate, I know I'm not going to be able to pick up uh, like some lighter nuttiness or floral or like that cinnamon note. Yeah. But I can taste that creamy chocolate note and it's just really pleasant. So shout out to John Huber of Crown Heads. He just posted on Instagram, you know, there's this like constant, you know, what's new, what's new. And, and Crown Heads is releasing a ton of new stuff this year and everyone's like, you know, clamoring for it. But he did say in the post, like the, the whole point of the post today was like, and don't forget the core line. Mm -hmm. You know, we started back in, you know, the early 2000s with this, this, and this. He didn't mention the Juarez. That was that just, core line? No, no, it's not necessarily. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know how he like defines that. Sure. I would define it as core line. Sure. But, you know, he had four kicks, uh, Le Creme and yep. uh, the blue band one. I can't even remember uh, it's a, a little bit stronger. It's blue, like a light blue with like gold around the outside. La Imperiosa. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, a stronger yeah. cigar. Yeah. Like really rich. Yeah. Great sticks. Don't forget about them. Shout out, you know, Crown yeah. Heads, John Huber. Yeah. I think he would appreciate what you just said. Like that is like right up there with, don't forget about these core lines, but let's get Love into like cigars. our, like if we're going to just grab a cup of coffee and a cigar that we think is going to go with any cup, that's what I tried to like narrow this down to. Uh, I tried not to favor Habanos. It's tough for me not to. It's my core thing. But one of the first ones on my list is the Rocky Patel number six. This is a phenomenal stick. I'm going to hold that up. For um, I love smoking this cigar. It has a great sweetness, creaminess to it. It, you know, if you care about ratings, it got rated by 93. Uh, it's just a phenomenal stick. It's nice. a Corojo wrapper in Honduras. I, if I pick that cigar up, I know I'm going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's just like a staple go to number six by Rocky Patel. Great cigar. This will go pretty much with any cup of coffee, I feel, and it will make my morning more pleasant. Very nice. How about you? What's your uh, first pick? My first pick is one that's, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I've smoked a lot of the previous version, the Pan Caliente. I'm a huge fan of the cigars that HVC makes. Uh, Rainier Lorenzo, uh, that's his line of cigars. Uh, this is the hot cake. So this is the rebrand of the Pan Caliente, which literally means hot cake. It is a little bit leathery, it's rich, it's coffee-like. Uh, it's got these notes of cinnamon that I love. Absolutely love this cigar. This is one of my go-to morning cigars. Click on JC3PR. He loves Corojo as well. Nate, you got somebody in here. Is it uh, P. Roland One loves the Antonio Connecticut. Beautiful. It's a great it's cigar. A great morning cigar. It's a great cigar. And again, it's a Connecticut, but it doesn't smoke like a Connecticut. I, I'll get to another cigar when I get to my second one. Oh, That's, you haven't talked about it yet? No. Did I? Oh, shit. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. We'll get to here, I haven't. I mentioned it earlier. Okay. Um, I held it up and talked about something okay. where Connecticut, but remember you mentioned how 
the Connecticut, a lot of the Connecticut's we have here have interest. Well, one, the ones we're smoking are Connecticut around more unique, interesting, bold flavors. Yeah. And I mentioned that Antonio was like that. So we'll talk about that okay. when we get to that one. Well, go ahead and talk about it now if you want. I mean, all right. So perfect. Time. The, um, it's a great stick. The Antonio line for Hoyo de Nicaragua is a really powerful, strong cigar. Um, I think Charlie Minato on Half Wheel said it's top five strong cigars kind of across the board. So they took that Antonio blend and added, uh, uh, let me make sure I get this right, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan filler and binder. It just has a ton of complexity. It's um, leather, earth, cocoa. Um, it's a ton of earth in this, a ton of cedar, and then it has that creaminess that comes through from that Connecticut wrapper. It's just a really nice, complex cigar. And I'll smoke this all day long as a first morning cigar until it gets to about uh, November in Minnesota. And then I generally will smoke this indoors because this for sure, if I really want it, I'll take it anyway and I don't care if it cracks because I'll just smoke right through it, but it'll often crack. As it heats up, if it's really dry out, this might get to somewhere right here under the band and it might crack a little bit. Can you type in the comments, uh, Matt, I, I have a question for everyone. If we can throw it up there, great. If not, um, so we were talking about this, Nate. We were both saying, are we the best people to be advertising morning cigars? Because we both smoke pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And there comes to be a point where you like you you just held up that cigar. You said Charlie, who I respect from mm -hmm. Half Wheel, is saying that it's a strong cigar. That's not the first time I've heard it. Uh -huh. The people over at Tobacco Grove told me the same thing. Uh -huh. And I didn't think it was that strong. I don't either. And does that have to do with nicotine level? Does that have to do with flavor level? I just feel like I'm like, I don't get affected by cigar nicotine as much. I don't either. And I don't know if that's I haven't in a long time. Right. So yes. mm -hmm. here's the question. Do you, do you pick a cigar or not pick a cigar based on strength? And I don't know how to word that, Matt, but it's basically like, does, does the strength of the cigar affect you? It's basically what I want to know. Because there comes to be a point for me that I'm not seeing it as much. I think the last cigar that I had um, that affected me was Noir by Perdomo. And okay. that was like, the rep told me it's like, it's like drinking a nine or 10% alcohol beer. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, that's like a good analogy. Yeah. And I did feel like, I was like, okay, like that I felt the nicotine. But yep. that was several, several years ago. That happened to me at... Our local shop, Davidoff Chef's Edition. Met up with a buddy, and he's like, I'm like, what do you want to smoke? He goes, you know what? You're the expert. Pick something really special. And that was when the Chef's Edition had just come out. I'd had a couple already. I had forgotten how strong that cigar was, like deceptively strong, and it built up to about the middle middle to the, the last third. And I'm about halfway through my cigar. My buddy is about halfway through his cigar. And I look over and his face is white. And I said, hey, pal, you doing all right? And he goes, I'll be right back. And he had to just kind of go put his head between his knees for a hot minute. I wish he had stopped for a second. I would have said, hey, go get a Coke, grab some right. sugar. I'll notice that nicotine like it's sort of like a jittery coffee buzz. Weird thing for my body chemistry, or however you want to call it, if I have a cigar and I typically don't eat until dinner. That's kind of my routine. So I'll have three, four cigars before I've ever had a bite of food. And I'll smoke a second cigar right after one that makes me maybe a little bit caffeine jittery. You know, so that's the sure. nicotine, obviously. I'll have a second cigar, kills all of it. Just disappears. Oh, you're just feeding it. I just feed it. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Definitely not the guys you want to follow if you want smooth, <laughs> light cigars to but, be smoking. But it's true when somebody asks us, hey, how strong is this cigar? We literally, I'm sometimes I'm like, I have no idea. Because yeah, it I doesn't affect me at all. I, I can't tell anymore. And and here's the key. I'm not out there seeking strong cigars. Mm -hmm. I'm not a part of that fad or I'm a part of that group that wants to just smoke the strongest cigars. I want good flavor cigars. And that's what I focus on. And that's why I have these cigars in my collection because I love flavorful, just, you know, they, they, we lit up a, a cigar recently together that we were like right away on the first light. 
first three puffs, if you know the cigar is good, it's like, wow, Whoa. I'm, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Um, the next cigar, and some of you guys might overlook it, and that's why I bring it up. Because I think there's a ton of cigars, especially as soon as you start diving into cigars, and this boutique word gets thrown around all the time, and it's like this, that, and the other thing. You overlook maybe this brand. And it's the St. Louis Ray by um, basically Altus, but St. Louis Ray Reserva Especial. It it had it, it went through a little bit of a change. I don't know, Nate, if you got mm -hmm. longer arms than I. Um, it went through a little bit of a band change. It's just a phenomenal cigar. Um, let me find some of the details. I thought I had it um, up here, but for me, this is a there. wonderful cigar. I will always have this in my <laughs> cigar collection. And let me double check what kind of wrapper that has, because I don't think it's your typical, you know, Connecticut shade or Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. It's just a, uh, this is the cigar I light and like the old guys in the smoke shop go, that smells really good. Uh -huh. Like that reminds me. And this blend hasn't changed for years and years and years. Of course, crop changes, but they have a whole team of people making sure that these blends stay the, stay tasting the same. Sure. It's just a phenomenal cigar. I just remember lighting this up next to uh, a gentleman um, who has since passed, but he was always smoking a pipe. Virginia number seven was his like Q1, if you're in the tobacco business, lane Q1. So that was his choice tobacco. I lit this up and he goes, that smells good. Mm -hmm. And like when you get a nod from like an older tobacco user, mm -hmm. you're kind of like, yeah, I smoked the good uh -huh. stuff. You know, yeah. you're like, eh, this is good. Uh, th that's what this cigar has been. It's always held a special spot in my humidor for me all the time. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if I have the details on that one. So I apologize. My computer's a little slow. What's your next all cigar? Right, so my next cigar, uh, I brought a slightly different one than what I probably smoke more often. Uh, I'm a big fan of Crux cigars. Crux Cigars is owned by a, a gentleman who's native to Minnesota, good friend of Rob and I's, one of the most knowledgeable people in the industry, Jeff Hogan, and the nicest guy you're ever going to meet and super generous with his time, information. They just re-released, hopefully we can see this if we pop up here, Matt. This is the Crux Du Connoisseur Number 2 Petite Lancero. And this cigar is just a flavor bomb. And I really like this in the morning, especially when I'm trying to make myself focus on just the cigar and relaxing and not trying to think about work, not looking at TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, because with the Lancero, you really do have to give it more time and attention, much like a pipe. Uh, it's nutty, creamy, floral. Um, I love cigars that have a nice floral note to it, and this just has a ton of floral in it. I think, I just think it's a beautiful cigar. It's a great cigar. The cigar in their core line that I smoke the most is their Epicure. Very similar kind of in construction to this Connecticut Antonio, where it's a Connecticut wrapper around more full flavored binder and filler. Just really great complexity, all that creaminess and nuttiness, but it's got a little more body than what you're expecting in those these classic Connecticut's. That cigar is the cigar we smoked while we were fishing with Jeff on our box, pre our, um, box press interview. So if you wanna check, Jeff and the whole line of uh, yeah. his cigars out from Crux. Go check that out on YouTube. It's a great video. We're fishing in Minnesota. Phenomenal cigar. Um, yeah, this is a great cigar. Throw up Darth Arthur's uh, question. Darth Arthur says, what if you take your coffee black? I do. I take my coffee black. I Every do day. pour over coffee. Every day. I don't do a lot of cream in my coffee unless it's bad coffee <laughs> that's <what it> is. <laughs> so uh but i like to be honest i talked to nick malilo um recently and in his line the wiseman he has the blue label one which i believe is a connecticut shade and he told me that that's great with cafe con leche and i had to ask him what is cafe con leche because i don't speak that language and he says coffee with cream mm -hmm. and it is phenomenal yes like that cigar with 
coffee and cream is phenomenal because it just builds on itself. But if you take your coffee black, it depends upon what kind of coffee you drink, in my opinion. So yeah. I don't like to do a ton, like really dark black coffee is very bitter. And I don't like to amplify that bitterness. So mm -hmm. then I try to come in with something creamy and smooth or a little more nutty, but then sometimes the coffee can override that. Sure. So then you have to go strength with strength. Yep. And then that's like when I go to like Placencia's Amafuerte, that brand, it's like strength with strength. I can overpower it. I can get it. Uh, it all comes together. So I don't really know if there's a great answer to that because black coffee can mean a lot of things. Yeah. And I think if you drink the type of black coffee, lighter roasted, single origin that you and I are very fond of, it's got a lot of nuance. Sometimes it's creamy and rich, but still kind of lighter bodied. Sometimes it's like blueberry pie. Sometimes it's right. tart citrus. You mentioned the Alma Forte, one of my favorite brands, Placencia. And that Alma Forte for me has a really great tart lemon. And one of my favorite things to have in a great espresso is just a little bit of lemon zest. And those two things together, out of sight. Yeah. Out of sight. Great. All right. I got to hit it home with, uh, you know, of course, a Habano. Who would expect me to leave a Habano out of my <laughs> morning wrap up? I mean, come on. Rob's absolute favorite. It's just, I don't know what it is. There's, it's probably because Habano is like a really loose term for a lot of different types of tobacco. Uh huh. So I just, I don't even know if there's anything behind the name, but I gravitate towards them. They tend to be medium bodied, a little bit of sweetness and not too strong either one direction. I'm sure there's some out there. I just don't gravitate towards them. So I have uh, Blackbird has made, and, and if you're familiar with Blackbird's lineup, because we have a box press about it. So go check that out because that story is amazing. Gave me the chills just talking to him because of his story. But Blackbird's cigar line does not have a Habano in it, except for if you know about this little tiny secret coming out of Stogie Bird cigars. Uh, Sam reached out to uh, Blackbird Cigars uh, and said, hey, why don't we make a Stogie Bird exclusive cigar right now from Blackbird and let's, the bird theme is, is going uh, with Blackbird, right? They're naming all their cigars after birds. So they named this after uh, Pennsylvania's state bird, which is called the Ruffed Grouse. So Sam was like, I think this is a great name. And uh, he's like, Rough Grouse, we could call it Rough Grouse, Habano Wrapper. And what he, what's going to happen is this cigar is going to be, you can get this cigar over at Stogie Bird right now if you want. If you want it, you can go buy it before it comes out on the market from Blackbird. So trade secret. And if you like Habanos as much as I do, you're absolutely going to love this cigar. And it's going to come out in 2022. And he's going to even box press it. Ooh. So even better. I can't wait for that to try that. But if you like Habano cigars, this is just phenomenal. Sam, thank you so much over at Black or over at Stogie Bird for there's too many birds right now. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of Blackbird. I got Stogie Bird. I got a lot of birds fly, flying around. Rough grouse is in my head. Great cigar. Great with coffee. That's all I have to say about that. This just phenomenal stick. All right. So my last stick. First one of these I got, it's from uh, Luciano and Ace Prime Cigars. When we were at the PCA trade show in July, they had a first night mixer, cocktail mixer, and really almost everybody showed up. And they gave out, I forget if maybe four cigars in a Boveda small uh, one-year humidor bag. And I saw this cigar and I went, uh, if it's a free cigar, uh, you know, put it in the humidor, I'll get to it later. Right. Didn't really think much of it. Pulled this cigar out. This is the Fiat Lux or Lux, hold if you will. Up. Yeah, let's hold it up here. The Fiat Lux. This cigar is outrageous. So it's after the car, Brad. I don't <laughs> I'm think just so. I'm just kidding. No, it actually means Latin, let there be light, is what Fiat Lux is. When, uh, when you said I think we should me, call it about the car. <laughs> I see when you said this to me, I was like, oh, Fiat came out with a cigar. I got to look this up. <laughs> That's amazing. Every time I smoke Seriously. this now, I'm going to have to try to find a picture of a Fiat and snap it right next to it. Uh, On your walk. This is very interesting because it has Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, which I'm a big fan of. 
and then Nicaraguan binder. And then the fillers come from three different Nicaraguan growing regions, uh, Pueblo Nuevo, Jalapa, and Ometepe. Um, and I haven't been able to find a lot on the flavor profiles of that Ometepe, but it's such a unique, interesting flavor profile in this cigar. I think Ometepe has a lot of volcanic rock in I it. I think so, yeah. Jalapa, I don't know. I'm not super versed in Nicaragua, but the first one you said, I've never heard of that region. I've heard of Jalapa yep. for strength, yep. I believe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ometepe yep. for that like volcanic richness. And then that Pueblo Nuevo. Pueblo Nuevo, Nuevo I've uh -huh. never heard of. So I yep. wonder what like, this is the part of me that really gets frustrated with manufacturers. I want to know why you chose those three different regions because you did it for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And one of, you know, like is the, is the, uh, I can't say the first one. Is that Pueblo? Pueblo Nuevo? Yep. Is that the sweetness? Is the Jalapa the strength? Let's and is the Omotempe for the kind of like earthy, rich, like, I don't know. Like there's a reason for this. And my call out to manufacturers is as much as you don't want to give us or pigeonhole us into maybe flavor profiles that we're going to get out of it, it would be great to know why you picked certain regions of cigars to blend, to complement each other. It's just like, to me, blending wine or blending anything or coffee, you're picking that and you're roasting it to a certain level to bring out the most characteristic in that bean. So, and as we know, the longer you roast the bean, the difference you can get out of the flavor. So all of this mm -hmm. matters. I'm just trying to figure out how it matters to me as a consumer. So maybe that's for a future date, understanding origin of tobacco and the terroir of it yep. to really understand what your, your palate should be tasting. Yep. I'm not finding much. It's there's kind of not much information on it, to be honest with you. I'll have to do some more digging and see if I can find more information on this. I know that the guys down at uh, uh, Gerard at Mardo Cigars does a lot of Instagram stories on cigars, and he talked about this Fiat Lux and mentioned both of those, Ometepe and that Pueblo Nuevo, and uh -huh. said I he didn't have a ton of information on it. It's kind of a little bit secretive, I think. So I might have to reach out to them and see if they have a little more insight information. Yeah. Uh, last but not least in my lineup, it's Caldwell's Blind Man's Puff. Great cigar. One of my favorites. Um, let's see. What is the... They make two different kinds. They do make a Connecticut. They difficult do. Connecticut. <laughs> I particularly like the Ecuadorian Habano. No strong... Uh, contest there <laughs> no big surprise yeah as uh G is it habano yeah rob will smoke it <laughs> just give it to him um so yeah this is this is again always in my humor i tried to pick out the ones that i always gravitate towards so that you guys knew this is what i reach for in the morning when i grab my coffee when i'm out on the weekends when i'm walking the dog when i'm with my family uh this is what i'm smoking and of course, there's always new stuff out there and there's, I'll chase that all day long, the new stuff. And I want to try new and I want new flavors. And I want, I think what I'm hearing from everybody in the comments is they want flavor. Yep. And I love hearing that. Everybody wants just flavor. It's not necessarily like, oh, I got to have this shade. I got to have this strength. It's just, I want some flavor. I want yep. some flavor. I want something new. I want something consistent or I want something uh, that I can depend on when I light it. I know I'm going to enjoy it for the next hour, hour and a half. So one of the things that I actually really gravitate towards, and it's a, a sensory, tactile uh, thing for me, I really like cigars. Habanos have this in spades. Really nice Connecticut's have this. I love the mouthfeel, and I particularly prefer round cigars versus box press for this reason. Really? I like just the feel in my mouth of that silky, oily, super smooth wrapper that to me is something that already sets me off to have a great smoking Are experience. you a spinner? Do I you do. Spin? I do. See, I don't spin a lot. And that's why I think I like box presses because they just like fit in my mouth. They really pop right well. in. Like, yeah, great. I had a conversation with the gentleman at a cigar event this past uh, Saturday in San Antonio. And he had his cigar. I'll see if I can do this. Just like this. Try to as well. I can't do that. And I looked right at him and I said, I can't tell you how many times I have tried to enjoy my cigar like that. I can't do it. No. For me, it is, and that's it. 
Yeah. Right smack dab in the middle. Yeah, I can't do the side thing. And I do. I like to roll it. I like to rotate it. Just the, for me, it's that sensory feel of the tobacco sure. on my lips. Um, I just really like it. It's part of the reason why, as much as I love Padron cigars, I often will gravitate to something else. Oh, sure. Because one, it's a lot of them are box pressed. Most of them, right? Yeah. And they have that sandy kind of really fine sandpaper feel from that uh, Mexican wrapper, the San Andreas, because the bulk of their cigars are San Andreas wrapper, if I'm not mistaken, right? I have no idea okay. on that. It just but has kind really of a thick, oily wrapper. Yeah, and they're kind of a little bit pebbly. And I get used to it, but it isn't my preference. I prefer something like, th uh, like this. You can just see how oily this SLR is. I love the mouthfeel of that cigar. Right. It just really is enjoyable yeah. to me. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm out of coffee. I am um, tapped out as well. I hope the discussion was good. Uh, keep throwing up your question. Wait, what was this last question here? What do we got? Oh, yeah. Tobacco Special. Uh, that is in basically yeah. infused coffee cigar. Great cigar. I actually will grab that when I go out on the golf course Yeah, and smoke that first thing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I would pair that with coffee, though. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. and I have. And it's great, but sometimes, um, basically, I call them double negatives. Yeah. Like if you pair uh, a very strong creamy with a cafe con leche, it can kind of knock each other out, and you can like ultimately taste more. blurs together. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. like your palate goes, okay, well, these two are the same, so let's mm -hmm. figure out what's different. Mm -hmm. And then you go, oh, I don't, I don't really like what's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so. Um, a great way to put it. I would just say, yeah, it's a great cigar, great morning stick. Um, I think, I think what I've come to conclude is all cigars are great morning sticks. It just depends upon your mood, how you want your day to go. Um, get out there. And if you're not smoking cigars in the morning, try it. It's like, for me, uh, palate fatigue is real. If you want to try a cigar before you have breakfast, before you have a lot of stuff going on your palate, I even bought a tongue scraper. Oh to, yeah. Cause I heard like. You know, obviously, I don't necessarily like to brush my teeth with a lot of toothpaste if right. I'm going to smoke right away. Yep. Because that'll mess things up. But you can brush your teeth without a lot of toothpaste or none at all and then do a, uh, a tongue scraper and really hone in on that morning stick. Yep. And get the flavors out of it. And I smoke slow. Um, Churchill's are great because they stay cool. I mean, all of the above. Just have fun smoking cigars. I mean, it's just that's what we're here for. And to, to piggyback on that, I will often first thing in the morning because my absolute 100% of the time favorite time of day to have a cigar is first thing in the morning. I think part of the reason why I don't often go with classic Connecticut is my first cigar because that's my favorite time of day. I want to have like the best cigar first thing in the morning. Okay. So I want to be able to taste all that. So I won't brush my teeth. Oh. And I'll just have the cigar because, you know, you're... You know, you know, you might have had something for dinner that you maybe still taste. In that case, you can kind of make a call. But usually things are pretty neutral. Have a, you know, glass of water, just kind of clean everything out. And then I'll have the cigar. Then I'll go brush my teeth. And then after that, it doesn't really matter because I can kind of just get rid of that taste once I have another cigar or kind of get through that. But that's what I'll do in the morning. I'll just go right outside, have that cigar, and just kick it right off. What did Julie say down below? Oh, wait, Well, there was this? a question that was up there. I'm going to try my first Liga Pravada this weekend. Any tips? It's a great cigar. Great cigars. Tips? Uh, cut it, light it, smoke it, enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I might actually step out of my norm of putting uh, cream in coffee, and I might do that with like a Liga Pravada number nine because okay. it's such a rich cigar. I might want to kind of mute the coffee a little bit to just kind of add some creaminess to a cigar that's pretty bold. I think that'd be kind of a cool experiment. Great. I haven't had a Liga in a while because they're hard to get right now, so I can't remember. Right. Great cigar, though. Uh, other questions we got here. What did Julie say about <laughs> That's great. Swag, a boba to tongue scraper. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, she had a bigger question, I thought, earlier up. Uh, she did keep going up uh, a little bit further. Yep. Is Anyways. strength nicotine or taste? Strength is nicotine in my book, oh, not, not taste. I was going to add one last note. 
I do think kind of like with coffee, oftentimes people will assume a really dark roasted cup of coffee is stronger, has more caffeine in it. And the converse is true. Yeah. It's Light actually roast. got less caffeine. Lighter right. roast has more caffeine. Often in cigars, lighter wrappered cigars can be deceivingly strong. I think what a lot of smokers um, met a gentleman this weekend who we were giving him a, a lighter wrapped cigar. And he's like, ah, I don't like light cigars. I like strong, big cigars. I think for a lot of that, it isn't so much about strength as it is about a full punch of kicking the teeth flavor. Right. Because often strong flavor equates to strong nicotine. Right. Or strong caffeine. And in a lot of cases, it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Strength to me is nicotine. Flavor is totally different. And, and body is, again, the amount of oils and, and to me, body more is connected to flavor, mm -hmm. but it's not always. Right. So I don't know. This is a, it's a fun world to be in because it's always something new thrown at you. Every cigar is new. Every cigar experience is great. Yep. Uh, I, I don't knock a cigar until I've had it two or three times. Um, I try to have it on different palettes. I try not to... You know, I try to give it a morning palette. Mm -hmm. I try to give it an evening palette. Yep. I play around with everything. Yeah. And I think going back to a previous unbox we did with truly blind, unbanded cigars, to taste a cigar and have it come up and know it was a cigar that you previously said, ah, I just really don't dig that cigar. And then you smoke it and it knocks your socks off. Right. And you go... Was that the band? Was that part of it? Or did I just have a different palette and now I love it? That's fun to go back and revisit it again and see if that another one tastes the same as what you enjoyed when it was blind. You can do the same thing yeah. by just taking the bands off the cigars and putting them in a humidor and letting them kind of get jumbled up. Mm -hmm. If you want to track it, then that's a whole different thing. But if you just want to go on and just say, hey, I just want to experience cigars and see if I like them. Take a few bands off, jumble them up, mix them up, put them in a humidor and go to them and then just be like, wow, that was great. You know, I don't know if you want to number them or whatever, if you want to try to figure out which one is which, but um, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Talk about a lot of fun. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us. The comment board was awesome. I appreciate We're doing this every other Friday. We're going to keep it consistent because we want to be here answering questions. We want to be here giving you new stuff. What's coming up Obviously, we're dropping um, more box press on the off weekend. So not this Friday, but next Friday, we're going to be dropping another box press. I got a special episode about the Cigar Smoking World Championships. We went to Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, and we, we experienced it. It's deep. Matt behind the camera has edited out some really great content. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell, ring. Um, just enjoy the content. I hear it all the time. It's great content, but I want to hear it from you guys. Let me know what you're interested in, what questions you have. And then coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking all about season change and humidors and everything that's going to be happening to your humidor. We're on top of it. We got solutions for you. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys next Friday. Nate, thanks as always. Oh, thanks for having me, Rob. Love being here. Great to see everyone. Appreciate you all. Have a blessed weekend. Cheers. Smoke cigars.